Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, in the studio with us is Charles Sauer, libertarian economist and president of the Market Institute, marketinstitute.org. His, his uh, Twitter handle is Charles Sauer, S-A-U-E-R. Charles, welcome back. Thanks for having me. So in Texas right now, the Republican Texas Attorney General is threatening to prosecute stores and uh, pretty much any other kind of business that is are engaged in price gouging based on a natural disaster. It's a $20,000 fine if you do it against a normal person, and it's a quarter million dollar fine if you do price gouging against somebody who's over 65. So uh, I, this is like very unlibertarian. I mean, it seems to me that the libertarian worldview would be, hey, you know, if, if, if the demand in town is for a million bottles of water and the water is selling for a dollar a bottle, and suddenly there's only a half a million bottles of water, every bottle of water is worth $2. If there's only a quarter million bottles of water, so every bottle of water is worth $4. Yep. That what disasters do is they simply, you know, interact with the marketplace and price gouging is not price gouging, it is a perfectly normal thing. We care about people, Tom. We want the, we want the people that are thirsty to have it instead of, the, instead of the people that need to refill their fish bowls with bottled water. So you're saying that asking people who don't have two pennies to rub together just lost everything, just got wiped out, their home is gone, they can't pay their bills, they're going to be homeless probably, you know, for years, they're, they're just devastated. But saying to that person, you know, you're going to have to pay $40 for that bottle of water, which you may not make it through the night without, because I don't want you pouring it into your fishbowl? Seriously? Well, I'm, I'm saying that uh, the government forcing the small business owner um what price he should charge for something and holding a uh, fine over his head if he forgets in the middle of a flooded storm to check somebody's uh to forgets. check somebody's ID to see if they're 65 or older before he gets well, a no, multi you can't, you can't price to gouge people under 65 either yeah but uh, but he might 000. be able to make it up if he's charging the right amount of money for his water. I mean, the fact oh, so, is... So price... if he charges $25,000 for the bottle of water and he gets hit with a $20,000 fine, he just made a $5,000 profit and just paid the cost of doing the, business. Is that what you're saying? The thing is, and why price gouging doesn't actually exist, right? It's There's no such thing. It's only price gouging when the left decides what moral state... It's going to be. Except this is not the left. This is yeah, the this Republican is... Party of Texas. No, this, this is the is... Republican Attorney General of Texas. In fact, the Republican Attorney, Attorney General of Texas said, and I quote, selling or leasing. Uh, no, that's the law. Excuse me. Let me find the place in the article where. Uh, there's a there's a Republican Attorney General of uh, Kansas that was actually somebody who went to law school with my father that I, uh, I wrote letters to on uh, regarding price gouging, because he was actually pursuing it in Kansas. Um, well, here, here's what here's what AG Ken Paxton said. He said, "We're going to find you, price gougers. Once we find you, we are going to pursue you. So stop. Better to stop than to be found out." So this power is, corrupts. This is this is one of the things that an attorney general has as his power, and one of the stepping stones to governor or to senator or to something with more power is attorney general. So. You have a huge public crisis like this. It becomes very popular for somebody to take their power and their position and exert it. And that's how he believes. And I, I think all of the Republican attorney generals that uh, pursue price gouging are woefully underinformed on, on the economic situation behind uh, prices and, and what sets a price, but also um, what the long term effects of what they're doing is going to be. I mean, look, this happened in Katrina. People. Rich people were uh, doing normal fixes on their houses when poor people still had holes in their roofs um, and, and weren't able to find lumber to fix them because the supplies weren't able to get back in there. If you're able to actually increase the prices to where the market will hold, then people uh, can get the people that demand it high enough can get the supplies they need. It holds the sub supply where it's supposed to be. So, so your argument is that basically only the rich need survive. To hell with poor people. No. You know, the, the, you, 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 you know, you, <laughs> it, this is, this is, a, the, the, you know, you, I, I'm, I'm almost speechless. I mean, it's just, I, I'm astonished that you would, you would support a capitalist. These aren't even capitalists in some cases. Many of them are just, you know, entrepreneurs or whatever. You would support a predator 
basically lining their pockets on the back of of people who are experiencing a, a, a horrible disaster. I, I you know, I, I think most people have more morality than that, Charles. And I Charles, find it they confounding. They don't subscribe to these, you know, amoral libertarian theologies. You, you can't out moral me on this because the fight that you're making is so that the rich person, so that the top one percent, can easily and cheaply buy the water that it takes to put in their fishbowl or to flush their toilet. And the morality of that versus having water where a family might be able to feed their daughters and their kids is not, that's not the moral world that I want to live in. I want to live in the moral you, world you where we can give water to- You that's a straw to... man argument, Charles. If, no. if, if a store, if they can't engage in price gouging and they have a certain amount of water, they're not going to say to the first person who walks in the door and says, I'll take 40 of those because I want to flush my toilet and do my fish tank, you know, and, and you know, realizing you only have 45 of them and then walk. No, they're going to say you can have one. Look, we, we know where the moral case on this and the straw man being made here is by you. The the actual case here and the facts behind this are that the government didn't want price gougers in the flood insurance market. So what happened? The government came in and not only mandated a price, they took over the flood insurance market and they're charging below prices for flood insurance. And so now we've had an increase of That's people a in the flood That's a different plains. argument. No, it's not. That's that's what happened. They, the government says people were price gouging yes, on flood has, insurance. No, they, it had that's nothing. the exact argument we're doing. I've got the moral high ground no, here. The, You're the, not going to take the, it. Uh, you know, I don't disagree with you about the flood insurance. The federal yeah. government's supporting flood insurance is causing mostly wealthy people. The vast majority of the flood insurance that's been used is people who have coastal properties and coastal properties. John Stossel is a good example. Yeah. He's had yeah. several houses replaced. Yeah, you, so you're talking, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar, a million, multi million yeah. dollar mansions and things like that that are supported by flood insurance. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who are wiped out and they need water. And they go to the local store and this local store is saying, the water that yesterday was a dollar a bottle is now $40 a bottle. Do you have your 40 bucks? And the people say no. And it's like tough luck, Charlie. They're wiped. Those this, people were wiped out for the same policies. They're wiped out because they of were price setting out. policies no, of big were, government. They were, they were wiped that's, out that's because what you the want fossil to fuel industry has been has been lying to us for four decades about what they know about now, climate change. And you've got now I know I just now, won because we just reverted from flood insurance and price gouging to fossil they were fuels. Wiped out that's by a when storm. I win. They were when, wiped out by a storm, and that storm was fueled by global warming. Absolutely. But that's but again, that's not the point or the, or the debate either. The, the debate is what do you do about price gouging? And you're saying you do nothing about it. And I'm saying that's insanely immoral. The purpose, the, pur the purpose of a government is to is to provide for the general welfare of its citizens. Now we just saw you define the morality again. I mean, the fact is, is you can't unstraw man the straw man. The basic argument here is that government set the prices too low on flood insurance, so people moved in. That's government price setting. And what you're saying is now government should price set here for the water. Well, now what happens? What if the person buys the water from I'm not a saying non government should now, set no, the price Tom, for the water? No, let, Tom, let's continue down this I'm road. I'm saying stay with the marketplace. Whatever the whatever the price no. for the water was, so that's the, the price for the water. The is. marketplace is only going to be fined in the end by by the government, and because you're the the marketplace okay, the only defines prices what, what by price supply and is. demand. So you're, I mean, the fact is, is so now let's continue this. So now the pri the store can't price gouge. So the uh, rich person buys the water in the store to to fill up their fish tank or or they can their, only buy or their toilet, but they so they get back to their neighborhood and somebody actually needs the water there. And they can't sell it to them because now you're going to consider that price gouging. Not for hundred bucks. It doesn't. It doesn't stop. I mean, that's the that's the point. Is once that's you point. once you price, price gouging set, doesn't start, it, stop. It keeps the waste going. No, once once you this is we're not I'm not talking I'm not a fan of wage and price controls. You know, Nixon tried that in the 70s. It didn't work. This is a wage um, and price control. The, no, this is a this is preventing people from behaving like predators when their friends and neighbors are in distress by controlling the price. That's that correct. is the that is the definition of a by, price by control. leaving the price where the market had set it. Uh, under distress, every time we talk about an issue, there's some group or something that's under stress. And so we're only talking about the stress is defined by the left in this case. And and so, I mean, you're going right, to move price gouging Because you're not even Tuesday. acknowledging stress. You're, you're saying, well, you know, if somebody is 
somebody's dehydrated, if they're, if they're, you know, three-year-old child is about to die from thirst and they don't have the 50 bucks for the bottle of water. I'm fully Screw acknowledging off. stress. That's why I want, I want markets to dictate the price. All right. Charles.